comrades, I am Admiral Andre, and welcome back to the second of my short Making History Expansion tutorials. In this episode, we will be building the R7 Vostok booster to get our freshly built Vostok craft into orbit. So, as always, Google Images are your friends, so I'm going to start by just having a quick review of that, so we have some guidance there, comrades. Now, comrades, let's have a look. The Vostok booster, as you can see here from these photographs, it was mostly white, so we know to keep it plain and simple for this one. Now, if we have a look here, I wonder if we can find one of the images here to show us the bottom. This one might work. This is now from a 3D model. It's always better to go to the original photographs, but this will do because it is correct. If we see the cluster of boosters here. Of course, this is the defining feature of the R7 rocket family. So, we have four engine nozzles there on each of the boosters and, of course, on the core stage. And then we have two of those vernier thrusters on the outer edge of the boosters, sort of on the outer line of those nozzles. And then we also have vernier engines in line with each of the boosters. Now, a lot of people place them in between the boosters, but that is not technically correct. But of course, you can do whatever you want. So don't feel that you must follow this. Do whatever is right for you. Now, let's have a look at the other one. This shows also the R7 family. So the Sputnik and uh, doesn't actually show the Vostok one now. Hmm. But this one does. So we can see they all essentially have the same lower stage. Now, of course, there are slight differences there, but uh, for our purposes, we will keep it uniform. So if we have a look at just now, ignore the upper stage, just look from right there. So if we just look and sort of estimate uh, how much more is this than the booster. So I'm just more or less guessing. I would say this is about a third of the length of the entire exterior booster. And then, of course, they have these tiny little triangular wings on the bottom. This is just important for trying to recreate the scale. Then, of course, we have a single tank there on the top with uh, an engine and four vernier engines outside, and then one of these open uh, decouplers. Then, of course, there's a nice fairing with a hole for the ejection, but I can't recreate that. Let me just see. I have one more thing. This just shows the engine, but we've seen that now. This, I think, is for the Soyuz. So, you see, the Soyuz uses this gray and orange color. Now, I just want to see the upper stage again. There, you can clearly see the four vernier engines, and they are... Let's have a look at this. They are more or less in line with the thrusters on the Vostok itself. I always look at things like that. Let's just see. Can we find one with an engine? That might now be a bit of a bit of a search here. Just one nozzle from this. Now, of course, this is just a drawing again, but one is fine for our purposes. So let's go back into the game and then try to recreate this. You can see it's the same white color again, so no strange colors. It even has this exterior pipe there, which we can also recreate. So I'll see you back in the game in a moment, comrades. There you also see the upper antennas and all of that. So, comrades, let's begin by loading up our save of the Vostok. We want something to begin from. So, uh, what did I call it now again? I did this like 10 minutes ago and I've already forgotten. There, Tutorial Vostok Making History Expansion. Load. There it is. So, oh yes, I could even add this. Now, again, this is not necessary, but if you want these roll thrusters only to, to, to roll, although it's not necessary, but then you just right click and you show actuation toggles, you turn off the yaw and the pitch so it will only roll because we already have these that will actually do the yaw and the pitch. So this might just help it from being total overkill and using up all your monopropellant, although you do have a lot, so you don't need to worry about that. Now let's get a decoupler. We'll use the small one. I'm still getting used to how these ones look. Actually, that looks pretty nice there. It doesn't clip into the uh, monopropellant thrusters either, so this is perfect. We'll use that. 
The next step is then a uh, fairing. Let's see, is it this one? I think so. Now, of course, we want to close off the bottom here as neatly as we can, but you can see there are pieces sticking out there of the orange there. But that's just how the whole thing is designed, so I can't do anything about that. Although I can move the radiator panels a millimeter south. Don't need to, of course. Then let's try again. Don't want the radiator sticking out. There we go, but you still see pieces of the tank, but nothing I can do about that. So now we have this. This looks really good. So now we need a tank. Fuel tanks and... That is the perfect one, comrades. We even have this exterior pipe there. So this is absolutely what we want. Now we need a an engine. Let's have a look. Engines and what would work well for this. We can use Kerbal Engineer to help us, but you don't have to, of course. Let's see. Hmm. What about a Terrier? 0 0.68 thrust to weight ratio. Of course, we don't need that much fuel. That's the other thing. So we can even reduce the fuel by half. 1.3 kilometers. Hmm. Maybe not quite. One and a half. Let's try that. So 0 0.85 thrust to weight. It's not quite enough, but by that stage we're already in the upper atmosphere, so we don't need that much. Our other options, if we go by size... What does this uh, thud have? I've used this before. It's got 108 kilonewtons at sea level, which is a lot more than the Terrier. But that's a pain because it's offset and then you have to make sure it's perfectly aligned and all of that. But you know what? Since we're doing this, let's do it. Let's make our lives more difficult because that's the way we roll. Let's try it anyway. Now it points directly down so you don't need to roll it around. We just need to make sure it's exactly in the middle. Exactly. You see, it also changes the craft center of mass. So when they line up, it should be uh, perfect. Now, of course, this is now the other thing. So you might not want to do this. Let me turn that off. You can see it's actually not in the exact middle because the bulk of the housing of the engine is actually offset from the thrust line. So it actually changes the mass slightly offset there. But that, I think, is perfect, because if we look at the line there, it goes right through the middle. But that looks a bit weird with the offset engine. Although you could do this, and it gives you a very powerful thrust-to-weight ratio. So it might actually be better. But I think let's keep our lives simple, even though I just said I want to make it more difficult. But if you're a beginner, let's not overdo it. Now we can take this engine, we can leave it like this, or we can move it in a little. I like to move it in a little here, just so it looks a bit different. We still have these pipes that go in there, and it, it looks nice, but it also has a nice clean line with just the uh, nozzle there, which I think matches the real thing a bit better. Now we want the Vernier engines, and we're going to use the RV-1 Cubs, because they were designed exactly for that purpose, although you can use... The ants, but that looks a bit too small. But I've used them before, and they work. But uh, this looks better. So let's use this. Of course, we line them up with the thrusters. And if they were in this configuration, it would clip into this pipe as well. So it has to be offset. Is that right? We just line them up perfectly with the bottom there. Actually, I'm going to move it up a tiny bit. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Looks like it was built into the thing. Forget the flashing there. It looks like something is wrong, but that's just how it is. The, fa the fairing is perfect there. Now, let's have a look. Um, what do we need to do? Now, these actually on their own give us a thrust to weight of 2, which is too much. It's way too much. 2.8 now. So, actually, yeah, we don't need another engine. The Terrier is fine, but we need to tame these a little. They give us a thrust to weight or a thrust of 33 kilonewtons. 
which is more than double the terrier. So let's play around with this. Uh, we don't want that much gimbal. You're going to get a lot of rolling around if you have a lot of gimbal. So let's put them on a quarter, 25%, because the mass is not that much here. And the thrust, uh, what do we want? I would say also a quarter, to be honest. Because we want the main thrust to come from here anyway. So that gives us a 1.29 thrust to weight ratio. Now, if you're not using the Kerbal Engineer, just make them a quarter, 25%. I think that makes it work neatly. Then I, let's just see, is there anything else I need to do here? I don't think so. Just make sure they're on the same stage as well. And then we, of course, have the fairing there, but it must go at the same time as the decoupler in the middle there then the engine, then of course the capsule, then the parachute. There we go, that looks very nice. Now we want the decoupler, so we go to coupling and the size 1.5 decoupler is the exact thing that we want for this comrades. This is made for this purpose. Now if we just put it on like that, you can see the fairing or the shroud of the engine is too small so we're gonna have to turn that off so right click and disable the shroud then we're going to move this up to sit nice in line with the bottom of the engine but you don't want this to clip because that's gonna kick the craft in a very weird way you just want it touching the edge there so it looks like it belongs here and that's it. And then, of course, I also always turn down the decoupler force because it has too much of a kick. So let's make it about a third. Just so we don't get kicked in all kind of weird directions here. Hopefully this will be the, the answer. So let us just save, of course. Now I'm over, overriding the other save, but that's okay. Now we need the actual R7 booster. Now for this, of course, we use the same diameter that we have here. And uh, let's just have a look. What options do we have? Let's just have a look. I actually think this type of tank is what we need. That's too much. Good grief, I'm still getting used to all these sizes. That could work, but... Actually, that works. That's what we want. It also has this pipe on the side that looks like it fits with that one. And it we, it can also go this white with a black stripe, which is fine. You could, of course, go back and look for... Where on earth is this one? The FLTX900. Good grief. Things disappear. FL-TX. There it is. So we can just have two of those as well. But I like this black and white one. It's still mostly white, so the color scheme is fine. Now, this also, comrades, gives us a scale for the rest of the craft. Although our boosters are very fixed in size. But let's just go and look if they match there. So that was supposed to be about a third of the booster size. Now, I think this is actually a bit more. That's about half. Hmm... We might actually need to go with the other one. I always let those ratios that I see in the Google Images guide me. Let us try that. Let us try that. Now, of course, I have to search for this missing one again, or the one that is hidden very well. There we go. So we'll use that instead. Now we need something to bring this diameter down so that the boosters can sit very nicely there. So for that, we'll go back to the fuel tanks and we will look for an adapter. I think this one, the FL-A151L fuel adapter. That's exactly what I want. Now, we're going to make the boosters sit like this. So they fit very neatly there. So now we need to just make sure that if I just put that there, it'll give us a rough indication of the length again. So let's see what do we need now something we still have only these old parts for that diameter i think it might just be easier to use this even though it has the stripe there okay this will be the rough guide for us comrades this is not the finished thing 
So let's use a hydraulic detachment manifold. We're just doing a sort of a, a sketch here, an outline to see what this thing is going to look like. So we're almost there in terms of where this needs to go. We'll bring it down a little bit. That's about where I would want it. Now, the reason why I'm not finalizing this yet is because we need to put the engines on and that changes the length as well. So let's see, this is of course the R uh, RK7 Kodiak. There's no other choice. This is the thing that's meant to go here. So now just right click and change to Big Shroud and there you go. That completes the thing. Actually, if I'm looking at this now, let's go back to that other tank. If we just have a look at the length now, that's one third then, that's two thirds. Hmm. I don't think we need it though. Let's not worry too much about the ratios and all of that. So we need another engine in the middle. So for this I'm just going back to the Kodiak and placing it just one time symmetry and alt so it snaps. We don't need a big fairing for this so a small shroud will do. Now, of course, we want to make sure they're lined up perfectly. So this size tank in the middle is actually what we wanted. Yes, this is it. This is it, comrades. So now we actually are pretty much there. I just want to move this a little. You can see the outer ones are hanging a little bit too far down. But actually, before we get to that, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We want to place the vernier engines. Now... I'm going to just have to go quickly back to Google Images for a moment. Right, so the boosters are in line with the door of the craft. So that means we do want them like this. Good. So let's get the... I just always look for that sort of thing. For this we want it down here and therefore in a cross configuration like this. Now for some reason they are slightly these nozzles longer than the nozzles of the Kodiak after you get the shroud. So I don't want the craft to, to sort of rest on that. But of course we will be using proper uh, you know, arms to keep the thing in place. But let's move this around a little bit just so it looks neat there. I think that's actually quite good. Then let's move this in because we still need to put the boosters above them. But I don't want to clip them into the engine. So I think that's about as far as we could go. So the Kodiak has no gimbling comrades. This is why we need the verniers and we're not going to turn the thrust limit down here. But I am going to turn the gimbal limit to 50%. Actually we could go lower than that because after we dump the boosters, we are still going to have a lot of control from those engines, believe me, and then we're going to have the wobbling issue again. So I'm actually going to turn them down to a third, roughly. So we did quarter for the ones on the top and a third for the ones on the bottom on the core stage. Then we want the boosters, so we just take that one. Oh dear, it's detached now. Hmm. The boosters now obviously have to go above that. So I'm going to put these manifolds on the bottom part here, not in the middle. And I'll sh tell you why in a moment. Just then place these as high as you can get them before they go straight to the core stage, you see? Onto the decoupler still, make sure of that. There, perfect. Now we're just going to move this around a little bit. Actually, hmm, we still need the... Uh, but we can do this now. The verniers on the outside of the boosters as well. So let's see. It's easiest to use the snap for this. Otherwise we're not going to get them aligned neatly. I think for our sake we should place them there. It's on the outer line of those engines like we saw before. Just so they line up on the bottom. Now we're going to move them in though. Because they don't stick out like this. So we, I put them in until that whole housing disappears, but only barely. There. 
It doesn't clip into the nozzle and it looks much better like that. Holding my breath. There. Perfect. That's it. That's all I want. Now, if you want to be really, really uh, pedantic here, you can even go to these and say you only want them to pitch or yaw or something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter. We don't need to worry. But I think they only worked in one direction, to be honest. So, uh, should we do the roll? I'm going to turn the roll off because we can still use the roll for the center here. Actually, if we look at this, this stuff is clipping here. This stuff is clipping, so we're going to have to move the core verniers in a little bit. Just barely. There we go. They still look like they fit that way. So there's a tiny little gap there in between, so they don't clip. Now the last thing that we need to do, uh, just to get this right, is to take the move tool and click on the fuel tank and move it down a millimeter so it fits neatly with the bottom of the core stage. I think one more millimeter. Good grief, I'm too scared to move it. There. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We're there, comrades. We're there. Now, uh, there's a few more things we still need to do here. This is uh, quite a involved build here. Let's save again. Always save. You never know what's going to happen. So, what's the next step? Hmm. You know, if we want to be really about this life, <laughs> we can take the rotate tool, click on these boosters, and you see the gap in between there at the top. We can close that gap a little bit. Like that. It's not clipping, and it gives us more room on the bottom as well. We can move this back out. Yes. Just a little. Still leave a gap there. Now we're getting somewhere, comrades. This is the way. Do you know the way? Uh, let's not go into memes, though. Now, on the bottom here, there's a cross in terms of sort of struts. And so, yes, they really do use struts in real life. Uh, just press C to, to keep the lock there. Now let me think, the struts actually are on the upper part of this lower section. So not on the booster, not on the lower, right there on that line. So let's begin actually on the core stage itself. We can turn it so that the shorter side on the bottom there points towards the booster. Uh, it's difficult to see that way. Put it right in the middle, comrades, right at the top part of that that engine housing. Then move it in a straight line towards the booster. Now, this is not the easiest thing to judge. But that's it. That's perfectly straight and it attaches right on that white edge there. So that's the first part. Now we need the second. We're getting there. Don't worry. Now we need to do the same story, but there, of course, because this part is already in the middle. Hmm, we're probably going to have to go from the other side. Probably going to have to. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. No, 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 I'm not happy with that. Take the thing again, take it one step in, and then move it out. If you just want to build an R7 booster, you don't need to do any of these things, comrades. But if you want to make it look nice, then uh, this might be helpful. Let's see. Now we take it one step in there and we do the same. Now we don't need to worry about anything. Now our lives will be easy. That's it. And they cross right there. That's it, that's it, that's what I want. So this is, uh, again, if you look at Google Images, there is such a thing with the uh, actual boosters. Just please make sure this is four times symmetry, otherwise you're going to kick yourself. Uh, have to do it all over again. Then I also like to put struts on the top here. Now, with auto strut, you don't need to do these things anymore, but they look nice, so I want to do them. Let's roll them around. Just at the very top here. 
Here we go. Uh, is that okay? I think I, I want it a bit lower. There we go. So it looks like it's again part of that housing. Now, save, comrades, for goodness sake. Let's save. Let's make sure what's happening here. So we've got the all the vernier engines on the bottom. We've got all the main engines, all the boosters. No, we don't want this. Now, remember, comrades, these boosters come with their own separate trons built in. So you don't want to fire them when you start the engines. You want to fire them when you decouple. So move that up. There we go. Now I think we're right, except we still have these engines to move down as well, the core stage. So a lot of engines, but there we go. We got a 2.81 thrust to weight ratio, which is too much, way too much. But at least that gives you a lot to play with. Now I think we're getting there. We're getting there. Let me have some water. This is uh, it's quite involved here. So, comrades, let's just have a look. We can, of course, change the color of the boosters as well. But I like the plain white one for the Vostok. So, let's see, is there anything else we need to do here? If we want to, we can add more Separatrons to this thing. It's probably not a bad idea to help get this booster to clear better. I think that the built-in ones are up there. So they flip outwards when they detach. Now, I've built ones previously that actually flip upwards when they detach. I'm not sure if we need to bother with that, though. This is fine. They give you this for a reason. But, comrades, if you want to build it in another way, you can see an older video of mine. I think the very first Kerbal video that I did, that one actually showed... We didn't have this, of course, so it was all the old tanks still. But I had a separatron on the bottom here, so I think maybe also one on the top, but there was more on the bottom, I can't really remember. But it kicked the booster away and flipped it outwards, and then it f sort of rotated away. But uh, this is perfectly fine. Now let's just double check our staging. So once we have that, we actually want the engines to fire with that decoupler there, so let's move that in. Now we just need a fairing, comrades. If you want, you can put a fairing somewhere right here and then just take it over. That might be the easiest thing. Let's try that for a moment. We'll just save again, take the whole thing down, take another fairing. Why am I not finding it? There we go. Just make sure you have the right size. Just take it out very slightly, but now could we do this? That's the thing. Fairings don't want to clip into that one on the top. So we're going to have to put a slight barrier in between them. And that's not going to look very nice. That's not going to look very nice. We could try. I'll show you this because it's an alternative for you if you would like to do it this way. So we'll just take a strut, just move it up a little bit though. There's now going to be a gap there. I don't like gaps. I don't like gaps. But uh, just I'm going to just build the fairing just to show you. So just a little bit out there and then straight up. Like that. And then, of course, you have the rest of the uh, booster on the bottom. Now, that's the easiest way. And this th actually doesn't look too bad. But I don't, I don't like how that's going to look once we detach the fairing. So this is actually the neatest way if you look at it from the outside there. But uh, no, we make things more complicated. So, now what we need is to go and build the fairing from the top down, comrades. So, let's go to the top of the Vostok. Save again, please, for goodness sake. I'm paranoid about that. Take a cubic octagonal strut and just... Now, to find the middle point, because it's not going to snap there because we have a parachute, just X, you get two of them. Then, as soon as they line up, you take the X away again, and you place. And it's pretty much perfectly in the middle. 
So move tool again, we don't want to see this, it does not exist, we never talk about it, there we go, it is part of the housing now. So we use a decoupler again, the smallest one is perfect, just flip it upside down, so it's not going to be interacting with anything and it will detach very nicely. Now we need a, another fairing to enclose the whole thing here, so we just flip the fairing around, we just need the right size though. And then we build it from the top down. Now if we just go straight down, it clips into the window there. So you see, it doesn't want to place it. So we have to go very, very slightly out. And then we just go straight down. Until we get about to there, and then we attach to the top of the other fairing. Good grief. I'm gonna turn blue. There we go. There we go. So now we just have the same thing, but it's from the top down. Now, of course, we save again. Then we have to still get a nose cone here. Now, here we have some choices, comrades. Uh, hmm, it's uh, not going to be useful, that, for now. Let's have a look. So the best is probably another one of these FLA-151L uh, tanks. We just take all the fuel out and then we get a nose cone. Because there is no nose cone that fits neatly with this new diameter that we have. Now that is probably the easiest thing to do. The one thing that bothers me about this is that line up there is not perfectly straight. It's going out and then it's going inwards. But you know, this is actually better because otherwise we have to place another fairing there, flip it correct way up and then build a point there, make sure it's not staged, then use various struts again like this, to build up a structure on the inside so we can attach the separatrons to that because they don't attach to fairings. But that's too complicated for beginners, comrades. So let us save again and uh, now this actually does not look bad at all. So we need two separatrons. We just make sure there's no fuel in any of this. Go to separatrons, and for this we will actually place them individually, comrades. So just one time symmetry and make sure that it has a nice snap. And then we do the same on the other side. If you make sure the legs are on that ring, then you know they're perfectly aligned. Now we just have to move them in because this looks a bit weird. Just like that. Actually, this one could go a bit up. Now, this one can go a bit up. There we go. Now, that's all you have to do there. But if you want to be extra fancy here, you can actually rotate them so that you don't see most of it. Like this. And then you move it in. Actually, let's be fancy. Why not? Let's be fancy. Now, of course, to get this one to rotate the same amount is going to be pretty much impossible. That's fine. We can just judge it like this. Ah, no, come on, man. Almost there, almost there, comrades. There, I like that. So now we have the two separatrons there and they sort of built into the thing aerodynamically. But now we want the one to be much weaker than the other one. We're going to say thrust limiter is 50% because that is going to kick the nose cone away to the left when it fires, which is better than just going straight forward because you might hit the thing if you burn your engines. So I like this, I have to say here, this is pretty neat. Now let us make sure our staging is correct, because this is a complicated craft, especially for a beginner. So we have to make sure all the engines, all the verniers and things are on the bottom there. Oh, those are misplaced. 
So, all, okay, that's now all correct, yes. Then we have the second stage when the boosters separate. So we have the fuel tanks themselves firing their built-in separate drones and the decouplers. Then we have the upper stage engine and its verniers, but I also want the decoupler there. Good. Then we probably want to detach the nose cone. We might want to do it earlier as well, but let's leave it on the next step. So in that case we have our two separate drones there, but we also want that tiny little decoupler that we built to be there, and we want this fairing to go as well. So they're all on the same stage. The next stage is then the decoupler for the craft itself, and the fairing there on the inside, then the engine, then the decoupler uh, for the capsule, then the parachute, and we're finished comrades, save again. We're finished. Now you'll see this craft has 5.5 km kilometers per second delta V. But uh, we can just have a look at that in a moment. Let's just move this whole thing down. What is that? Oh, it's one of the wing things uh, that was showing on the bottom. Let's just get structural and place the launch stability. Oh, we're not finished. Oh, good grief. We still need wings, comrades. Wings. For this we need aerodynamics, structural wing, what about this one, no, it has to have a sharp angle, small delta wing, might work, let's have a look, what else do we have, type A is way too big, yes, let's use a small delta wing. So in this case we want them to line up directly with the bottom of the engine. Now this is too big of course, so we have to move them in comrades. Just so they stick out. Actually I don't like this at all. I don't like that. We're going to use the basic fins. They look better for this scale. We'll move them in again as well. These are very small fins anyway comrades. They just help stabilize the craft. That looks much better. So let's save again. That's my motto now. Then we put the launch clamps on the top of the boosters like that. Then just move the whole craft down a little. Just make sure they are on the same stage as the engines. Then I think that's it. That's it. Uh, what else do we want? What else do we need? That's the question. I was thinking about something, but it slipped my mind now. I think we are really... Oh, it was the Delta V story. So, the boosters itself give us 4.6 kilometers, which is enough to reach orbit, comrades. We can, of course, play around because the fuel is not full here, but I think this is actually pretty good. 4.6, so just the top one was about half. The rest is all full. So then, I think that's it. That's it. We can now be really clever here and build a an escape system into the thing. Of course, they just jettisoned in real life. There was just a, a, a seat that jettisoned. But let's be clever. So we'll say abort. We'll click on all the engines to actually shut down, including the core stage and all the verniers. Shut down and the same on the middle. The parrot is going wild in the background. Forgive me comrades. It's that time of day when he likes to be active. So you might hear him whistling there. Then uh, let's see. What else uh, do we need to do? So now we shut down all the engines. The next thing is we decouple the capsule. So we click on it and we say decouple. And no, no, we don't want that. Not yet. Not yet. Actually, we do want that. No, never mind what I said. Decouple. Then, of course, we have the upper ones firing as well. Activate engine and activate engine. That's it. This should, and of course, click there just to deploy the fairing. That's it. So now in an emergency, the engines will shut down the pod will break off together with the nose cone and it will kick us away. 
and the fairings will deploy so then of course you just need to uh, also program in probably to detach let's put that on number two because number one was our antennas so we'll say two and then detach that thing there decouple and then if I could click on the parachute as well although that will be all that you have left on your craft then so you can just use that manually that's it that's it comrades I'll save again I will do a launch demonstration of this in a sped up fashion directly after I end my talk and then we will see if this thing makes orbit and I will end off there. It's a long and sort of involved tutorial comrades but this does look nice and remember you can download this craft in the description and play around with it more if you want. So save again and uh, we'll see what happens with the launch comrades. Hmm, actually comrades I took this out to the launch pad and I think it would look better with a longer tank right there. So I'm changing my mind again, but I think it will be worth it just for the aesthetics. So let's take these struts off, bring the whole thing down there, take that away, raise this back up. And now I just have to find the right tank again. This one, we just want it in this configuration with the white again. I think that looks better in terms of scale. Definitely. That's the right thing, comrades. Now we're on the right path. So let us just reattach these again. And make it look nice here. No. Closer. There we go. That's it. Just make sure all of the staging is still correct. Yes. Now, comrades, if you would like, this is now entirely optional, but uh, we have too much fuel here, so we can take some more of it out again. Let's say half of this, maybe. Or a bit more. Let's give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room there. Also, we can reinforce the structure of this rocket because this decoupler here is not the most stable so all you have to do of course is let's go to the onion or the Vostok capsule right click and say auto strut so it goes right to the bottom here this will give the whole thing a lot more stability without now having to add a ton of struts in the middle and on the top there and so on this again you don't have to do, but I think it will work better. So I think let us launch this thing now, comrades. We save again and then we see how it performs. Now the other thing though, hmm, we've got too much thrust to weight ratio here. Too much, but we can just throttle the engine. You can tweak that a bit if you would like, because that's entirely optional. So let's launch. Comrades, let's look inside the capsule. I always like to do that. Just for the atmosphere. Such a nice feeling here. Now I think we're ready, so I'm going to speed this part up, comrades, and we can just evaluate how the rocket performed when we get to orbit. So, three, two, one. Comrades actually really well, that's how it performed. We still have half of our upper stage fuel tank left, so if you want to go into a very high orbit you can do that as well. So it shows you there's actually uh, still a lot of uh, possibility for maneuvering, even with all the fuel that we took out. 
Now, the one thing I changed was I made the fairings, the nose cone area, decouple before the upper stage fired. So I'm going to make that change in our save as well, because it's not good to keep it on too long. When we reach the upper atmosphere, 50, 60 kilometers, we really need to get rid of it, because it adds weight that we can live without. So then, what else did I do? Yes, I just kept the throttle quite low, otherwise we could get heating effects on the way up, so... I think other than that, also the thing was I made the gravity turn very early on. Because if you have a high thrust to weight ratio, you really don't want to wait with that. You want to do it as early as possible. Now, I think, uh, what else could we do? We can just detach. So, space bar. And there we are, comrades. Of course, we have zero control without the monopropellant. So, we just now float away. Let's press the first uh, key, number one, to deploy all of the antennas. And uh, here we are. So, I'm going to turn on the RCS. Let's just put it on normal stability assist. And let us point up. We do have a lot of power in these thrusters, so you can turn them down if you want. But there is our craft, comrades, and I'm very, very, very happy with this. I think this is even better than my original attempt, because of those little thrusters on the bottom. So, I think let us go around for an orbit, and then we shall detach. I want to see how it performs with the reduced thrust or uh, strength of the decoupler. So let's just go around once. Let's just go around once. I like that the bottom antennas don't look the same as the ones on the top. Ah, that's so nice, comrades. Okay, so now we want to re-enter. So we are going to point towards the retro. And I think that's fine. So we full throttle the engine and space bar. There we go. Again, so much more fuel than we need. So let's just wait till this ap uh, periapsis goes down to sea level or thereabouts. And then we detach. That'll do. Now let's go to just before we re-enter. We want to keep the service pack on as long as possible because it has electricity and we can pretend life support and so on. So now we're about to re-enter. Let's go back to retro. Number one key to bring the antennas in. And detach. It still kicks us away of course, but not so dramatically as it would have otherwise. So comrades, I'm going to speed this up again and meet you on the ground. And comrades, an excellent re-entry right off what I like to call Pelican Point, this edge of the desert there. Hmm, oh well, I like to name the features that I see. Anyway, I think we're ready to deploy the parachute, so space bar and there it goes. A very nominal re-entry here, I'll speed this up again, just until it opens. Almost one kilometer. I have to say, comrades, the real danger of this craft and all of the other ones like it is if you land in a mountainous area, this craft is going to roll all the way down and explode. So in that case, I really would recommend that you eject the Kerbal and uh, if they can use the parachute, then 
maybe that would be better because this is of course how the original Vostok worked. The Kerbals or people would not stay inside the Vostok until it landed. It would land too hard. For us we don't need to worry. This is slow enough to be safe. But you can jump out and use the Kerbal parachutes if they have the skill of course. Otherwise they'll jump to their deaths. So let's just land here. Always good. We can have a water landing. That's fine. Helps to soften it a little bit, I guess. Let's look at Jeb. Aha! Enjoying the experience. And a very nice splashdown. So thank you for watching, comrades. In the next episode of this short uh, tutorial series, we will be looking at the Voskhod and the Voskhod booster. Now that will be not as involved as, th as this one, because we've done the work. We've built the R7, so we just repurpose it. And of course, the Voskhod is so similar to the Vostok, it will go very uh, very easily. So I'll see you then comrades. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day as always.